live and uh, join me live is my friend, the one and only Clarice Lin. And uh, so in this show, those of you, we are actually live, by the way, on LinkedIn, <laughs> on Facebook, um, on Periscope and on YouTube. And uh, some of you have been following me on my journey and the my entire focus those days is on really uh, growing my own school, uh, Classroom Without Wars. And I have just launched an entrepreneurship, life-changing entrepreneurship immersion program. And the program has a few key components. And uh, one is uh, online learning, and by the way, if you are here live with us, let me know in the comment section where you are joining us from, social media wise and geographically speaking. So back to my immersion program has online learning uh, where students and uh, people will be taking online class and certification earning, Adobe certification and entrepreneurship and small business certification. And this is the highlight. That's why Clary is here today. So the highlight of the program is a 10-day immersion in Singapore in December. It's going to be warm, sunshine, bringing, we can bring our swimming suit in Singapore. And so for the immersion, I have top-notch entrepreneurs, digital marketers to come to Singapore to serve as speakers where attendees can learn from them, can network with them. And my dear friend, Clarice Lin, is a speaker at my upcoming immersion program. And yesterday, I highlighted another speaker, which is Stella, who is going to discuss our LinkedIn. And Clarice will be talking about uh, Google Analytics as my uh, entrepreneurship immersion. So this week and next week, I'm going to highlight all of my amazing, amazing, amazing speakers. And I also have a group of digital mentors. I'm going to highlight all of them. So the program is really for uh, for young professional, young adults from 17 years old to 27 years old. Uh, flexible depending on how mature the person is and how well traveled, how much this person is into entrepreneurship. And so those people will be learning from uh, speakers like Clarice Lin and other speakers and will also be visiting uh, Fortune 500 companies such as Microsoft, Adobe, HubSpot, and leading startup companies in Singapore. And before I introduce my dear friend Clarice, and I just want to show you guys where you guys will be staying in Singapore. I'm so, so, so proud of myself for finding this beautiful resort-like location. So you can see some pictures here. And this uh, is for uh, members only, the resort, okay? As you can see from, you can see beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset. And uh, so it is, you are going to be in love with this location. Okay, so and if you are interested, you can click on my link. And uh, today we are highlighting our dear friend, Clarice Lin, who is going to discuss Google Analytics. And Clarice and I were actually finally connected in person in Boston, where Clarice rocked <laughs> the inbound stage. I was literally laying on the floor taking picture for this for this amazing lady. So much energy, had a great talk. And uh, so Clarice will come to Singapore to talk about uh, Google Analytics. I'm really, really honored. And thank you so much, Clarice, for being a part of my Classroom Without Wars movement. So thank you. Thank you, I, for having me today. It's really exciting. And I can sense your passion when we, were, when we met first time in Boston, your passion about the school you know, teaching the next generation. So I'm very excited to be part of your movement in Singapore. Uh, uh, where I was born. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Clarice actually originally is from Singapore. So very excited to have you, to give you a chance to visit home and spend some time with your family and also make an impact in the next generation. So share with us Google Analytics and your topic is, uh, Google Analytics, how Google Analytics is useful for business. So first, share with us uh, what inspired you to become interested in Google Analytics? That's a great question. I, I only have great questions. Come on. <laughs> 
So this question <laughs> is, I wouldn't say I stumbled upon Google Analytics. I think I was just there at the right time. So this happened, uh, goes back to about 10 years ago when I decided to move to London. And that's where my first interaction with Google Analytics came about. I think at that point, most people who have websites, they don't really know much about analytics and stuff. And that was sort of the beginnings of tracking, website tracking. So Google Analytics is essentially, for those who, of you who don't know, it's basically, um, hang on a second. Yep, so it's basically a tool to um, help businesses make the most out of their websites. So many people sort of, they think that, oh, you know, we need to have Google Analytics and then they get overwhelmed with all the numbers. But essentially the purpose of having this tool is to measure how successful your website is in promoting your business, promoting your products, promoting your services, getting more clients and customers. So that's basically what's the tool for. So a lot of people talk a lot about Google Analytics, but actually there are also a lot of tools out there, like from Adobe as well. They have um, Adobe Cloud. So to use web analytics to measure mm -hmm. success or user behavior on their website. So Google Analytics is most well, uh, most used by many people is basically because it's free to start with. So mm -hmm. anyone can start using Google Analytics, you, me, anyone. So it's, uh, it has a low entry point. And that's sort of how it got started. You are you are definitely the expert on this. I myself am very guilty of not fully utilizing Google Analytics. So do you mentioned uh, a few big name brands? So do you think Google Analytics is only for big name companies, corporations? Are there also value for uh, small business owners like us, mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. for young professionals who just launched their website trying to build their personal brand? Is there such value for those people to use uh, Google Analytics? Oh, for sure, definitely. That, so the thing about Google Analytics is there are two tiers. One, there is actually the, the high premium version for bigger companies. So there are certain functions that Google actually have developed for the big companies to use a premium version. Whereas, you know, for people like you and me, or, you know, for the small businesses, which might not have such a big budget, like Google Analytics is the best to start with without um, sort of spending a ton of money or, you know, getting experts who cost a lot to help you to set it up. It's very user friendly. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. And the thing about Google Analytics is it's quite easy to use in a way. And you don't need like experts, like analytics experts to actually help you to interpret the information. So it's definitely to answer your question, it's useful for people who are starting to build their personal brand, or maybe they want to have an e-commerce website, you know, something small that they're starting with because you want to know how many people actually even come to your website. Mm -hmm. So is anyone buying? So let's say 100 people, you see 100 people coming to your website, but they're not buying anything. So I think there's something wrong somewhere, you know, you need to deal with maybe it's the marketing that's not right, or maybe you're not promoting hard enough, people can't find your website, or maybe some the pages you're sending to wasn't working, you know, one of those things. So with Google Analytics, it enables you to know how visible you are in the mm. online world. Oh, this is so useful. I think, you know, I'm for this, my passion is to transform education. And I think mm. we need to learn from practitioners like Clarice and not just academics. I, I think there are lots of value that mm. students can gain from teachers, which is great. I have nothing against that. But I think a missing link in our education is that we need to learn from practitioners. I tried to learn Google Analytics. I think maybe I even had a certification somewhere. <laughs> I don't remember, but I never actually uh, practiced this to myself so it's really like uh refreshing to hear mm -hmm. uh, you how you mentioned some of the the things that we can uh, use google analytics to improve my our personal brand and our business mm -hmm. so share with us how do you use a uh, google analytics i know you are an entrepreneur amazing content marketer social media strategist mm -hmm. so how do you use google analytics and how often do you actually visit the analytics so for promoting content itself. So it's very useful. Let's say, for example, you put out a video and you put like a link over there. You want to know if people click on the link on your video content and they went to check out your website or you have a blog post. Is it ranking on Google? Are you getting, are you on page one? Is it getting traffic to your website? Are they, you know, doing something else on the website? 
for example, sending you an inquiry form, you know, send you an email, are they doing something about those? So if you spend a lot of time, especially on the different social media website or LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter as well. So when you have all of this coming in, you want to know whether it was effective. Did anybody click on any links? So the thing is, especially when you're starting out small, even if you might not have been to, um, let's say, if you haven't even start ranking any of your content on Google page one, um, you actually want to use analytics to promote it on the different social media wow. channels. So you want to know if it's getting clickbacks because you're not on page one yet, so you might not exactly get organic traffic, but you want to know whether your effort in creating that social media post, is it you know, is anyone seeing it, even seeing it? Or for example, if you have an email list, you can promote so people can click on that email list and go to your website. So that is something that um, will be really useful for anyone who is starting out and spending a lot of time promoting your content on the um, different platforms. No, and I, back, I love this. Yeah, and then going back to your question about how often should you be checking. So if you have a newish website, you don't need to actually look at it every day. <laughs> like my right now. I actually visited the other day. Yeah, keep, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Yeah, so so you want to know. So for example, if like only like uh less than 10 people come every day or something, then maybe there's no point. Maybe you can look at it once a week or so. But if you have like 100 people coming every day, then it makes sense to look at it more often. You want to see whether your latest blog post that you publish every week, is it getting any links? Like let's say, for example, like for yourself, I you could see like if you have a link on LinkedIn posts or, you know, one of your social media posts uh, on Facebook, is everyone, anyone clicking to find out about your program? Mm -hmm. So this would be interesting for you because I know you spend a lot of times on this platform, like doing uh, live videos like this and stuff. You want to know that. And the interesting part you can do is you can even customize the different links. So for example, if you're doing like a, a content about uh, your classroom without walls, so it could be like a different link mm -hmm. that you can actually customize to know whether it came from that link or it came from your other show, perhaps the show that you started every Friday for um, parents and mm -hmm. um, academics. So you want to know which show actually got that link to your website or, you know, to send an inquiry to tell, hi, I am interested in your program. So which one, which program actually generated more leads? Mm -hmm. So this will be really useful. So you know where to spend more effort. You know, this is the one campaign that you're getting more leads without having to go into ads i mean like if you're doing ads that's a different story altogether then you probably want to measure because you're spending a lot of money in it as well so you want to know whether it's worth it to spend money on advertising wow this is so powerful clearly you are a fountain of knowledge i can't wait to share more details in terms of how to use google analytics to boost our personal brand and the things that we're selling products or service so this is really nice and uh, here i see a comment from team yes i am absolutely i pretty much i go live every single day nowadays Hi, yes Sometimes a few, but this show, uh, we have quite a few people who just join us live right now. So this show, I'm highlighting, uh, interviewing uh, uh, Clarice, Clarice right now, which is for my upcoming uh, immersion program in Singapore. And Cla we have 10 speakers come to Singapore and Clarice is one of the 10 rock star speakers. I actually got 300 plus applications to come to speak at this event. So I'm really wow. honored. Yeah, so oh, okay. really. Really honored, and uh, uh, Clarice is uh, is coming. And uh, so, what we just discussed is uh, why Google Analytics is useful for business, even for those who are just starting out. So, regardless of which stage you are, it seems like Google Analytics is a great tool. So, I like that's what uh, Clarice will be discussing. So, here is a question from. Uh, from our dear friend team. I don't really know this question at all, but like, I'm sure Clarice knows what he's asking. So should we use Google Search Console? And can you please answer this question? 100%, especially if you have blog posts. If you are creating blog posts, you are getting someone to help you write those blog posts. You want to rank it on page one and it's a tool for you to generate leads, then definitely you should be looking at Google Search Console. You will know exactly Sorry, the lights went out because of the timer. <laughs> Sorry, let me just say. So, okay, hang on a quick second. Sorry for the last little thing. <laughs> so, as I was saying about that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's
it's a it's an automatic light detector so i said i've not been moving so the lights sort of turn off for a while you need to be more dramatic actually i'm also i might <laughs> so like work over yeah. the same thing may happen yeah yes so okay so we're going back to google search console so basically it shows you uh on average which keywords you're ranking for between page one page two you know position one two three four five so um if you start with so if you're not getting any uh, organic traffic from uh, google you can actually use google search console to find out which are the keywords you're ranking for are you ranking for the right keywords so you can actually link you can even link google search console this tool to help you with your google rankings you can link this to google analytics as well so you can actually see it has an entire um report suite of reports so this will be really useful this is so exciting i can't w wait to empower the next generation with this understanding i'm pretty sure like many uh academics in the uh traditional school environment they may not be practicing Google Analytics. So it's really nice that Clarice, you can come and share your personal experience. So that's kind of like, if you are watching this right now, so that's kind of in a nutshell, what Clarice mm -hmm. is going to discuss, how oh, yes. to use Google Analytics. Can yes, I, go ahead. Yeah, something I wanted to add is, do you know there are a lot of Google Analytics courses around, like Google They're Analytics bad. certified, yeah. blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of those around, but this kind are meant for professionals who want to spend the whole day staring at Google Analytics. So even if you have gone for those courses, it doesn't mean that you know how to use this data to help in your business decision. I mean, it's a, these are all reports, how to use the reports, how to get information. But the key part wow. about actually, yeah, the part that does, it's not really applied in those courses because these are all theory. So the actual application of Google Analytics is what information can you get from that tool to help you do your business better? So wow, I love this. It's, it's so different from, yeah, understanding the reports. Because you can spend entire day looking at the reports, but then you still don't know what to do with your business. So that's not going to be useful. <laughs> so, so let me ask you, so do you think understand how to use Google Analytics and how to interpret the data is an important skill for the next generation, for young professionals who are interested in becoming an entrepreneur to really master Google Analytics in order to become future ready? Do you think that's kind of a necessary skill? Yeah, I think there's two parts of it. The first part is understanding um, your business goals and aligning it. So when you look at the Google Analytics, you know what's important. You should be looking at those reports, which reports are important mm -hmm. that you need for your decisions, whether it's your daily decisions, weekly business decisions, or monthly, or even 12 to 24 months. Do you need to change the entire strategy? That's the kind of information you can actually get from Google Analytics. But that's not like the only thing. And the second part of it is, even if you don't know how to extract the data, if you're like a business person, you can hire an analytics person mm -hmm. at some point to actually do it. But if you know what's possible inside, you can actually get someone to do the technical analysis, but understanding the business mm -hmm. value behind those information is actually more important if you are planning to run your own business. Wow, this is this is incredible. I can't wait to learn more myself. Okay. Anyone again, if you are interested, uh, you hear uh, hearing uh, Clarice speak in person. So please make sure that you check out this website, classroomwithoutwars.ai to apply. I don't just take a student. And the program is designed for people between 17 to 27 years old and uh, who are interested in learning more about entrepreneurship and who feel like they are kind of stuck in life, who don't have the tools, the knowledge, the mindset to bring their life to the next level. So this program is designed for you. Pretty much many of the concerned parents watching this right now, let me know if you have any questions. So that's kind of uh, Google Analytics. I want to change the topic a little bit. You mentioned earlier, Clarice, you originally were born in Singapore, and but now you are in uh, in the United Kingdom. So I will ask you, how has traveling, you know, that's the question people ask me a lot, you know, hey, Dr. I, why do you have this program in Singapore, even though you are recruiting uh, American students? And so I want to ask you if you can share with our audience, how has traveling helped you grow as an entrepreneur? It's a whole new thing altogether. I would say when I was in Singapore, I was in the same environment. My friends were mm -hmm. the same. The mindset, people around me, technically, I mean, 
theoretically, you wouldn't suddenly go out and make new friends. You make the same set of friends through school, through university, and even at work. So because in Singapore itself, most people work quite long hours if, yeah, because the standard of living is quite high, relatively high. So you don't really have time to go out and meet new friends, I would say. If you want to be ambitious, the thing is you will work more. If you are not ambitious, you might work less, but you might also have less money. So you can't do a whole, whole lots of stuff. That's the reality. So when I actually came to London, because um, I didn't have friends here, like I didn't have close mm -hmm. friends and stuff. So I actually went out and proactively got to know people. One example is that when I was in Singapore, I was working uh, at Microsoft and there were a lot of uh, many colleagues from Japan, Indonesia, from China coming to work at Microsoft. And then when they usually ask me to join them, like in, in you know, um, in the evening to go out and stuff, I'm like, hang on, like I already have my friends here, my little circle of friends from schools, like catching up. And then I'm working over time and then I need to have my family, you know, to be with my parents. It's very Asian. So I wasn't thinking of, you know, going out to with them because I was very comfortable in my environment and I had time limitations. So I didn't do that. But when I came here, because I knew I had no one in a way. So I actually actively, you know, look at uh, meetups. I went to like Eventbrite, searching for events mm -hmm. to attend, to getting to know people. So I got to know different people outside people I would have got known. And I have to say, actually... I deliberately didn't want to meet other Singaporeans because mm -hmm. I wanted to know um, what it was like to talk to people from other countries because I know I have this group of Singapore friends already back there. I want to know what other people in the world who come to London, you know, who are they? What are they like? Why did they move countries? So I was meeting a lot of those people and it was quite interesting because we, I also realized that people who move around, they are more open to meeting new people not everyone, but there's a group of <laughs> actively meet people, but there are also people who had to leave their home countries because of financial reasons, like uh, people from Eastern Europe when they come to London, and they tend to stick around in their own group and they talk in the same language, so they never really learn English. And then they just sort of like did the same stuff all together. And then I realized like it's a different mindset. It's not even just about going there. You actually have to open up your minds to want to learn new things, meet new people, you want to know what's different. And that's only when you can truly change. If you are going to another country for, it's more of like a push. I mean, it's more because you had no choice but to move. And then you're not ready to meet new people, adopt new things, learn a new language, learn a new culture then you won't open your mind at all. I mean, like all the good things might be in front of you, but you won't see it. So it's not just uh -huh. about the new environment. It opens, forces you to open your eyes and you have to have this mindset that I want to know something that I've not known before. Oh, this is so powerful. This is exactly the superficial reason. Like people ask me, Singapore, you know, like Singapore is a very clean, very small country, uh, uh, like very uh, vibrant in terms of like startup business environment. Mm -hmm. But the deeper reason is exactly what Clarice just mentioned. How many of you? We all have boxes in our life, but how many of us actually see the boxes? It is very hard for us to see the box that is boxing us unless we are outside the box. So traveling, I totally agree with Clarice. Traveling is such a great way to see mm -hmm. the boxes that have been limiting and constructing our beliefs. Like for me, interesting that you mentioned this. Today I was just on LinkedIn. I saw someone said something that, you know, you really have to 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 open your mouth and to be ready to be prepared in order to be fed. You know, if your mouth is always closed, even if someone is trying to feed you, like the food is now going to be digested. I mean, so the same thing, I have to learn to open my mouth and there are so many opportunities, but coming from a, a Chinese background, a lot more reserved, a lot more conservative. I wasn't, I didn't know how to talk. I didn't know how to speak up. So those are some things that we have to deconstruct. And uh, I think, you know, if you decide or if your children want to join this program, this is a great way to step outside of your comfort zone to deconstruct all those boxes that have been limiting us. And so oh. thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I also want to add something interesting for those of you who want to know a little bit more about Singapore in terms of like one interesting thing about in Singapore is because it's so hot. I mean, not hot for everyone, perhaps, because it's mm -hmm. over 30 degrees. 
Celsius normally and it's quite humid. So the thing is, foreigners like Europeans, you know, British, they like those weather. So every time you go there, you realize that the people sitting out in the sun, sitting outdoors in the cafe, are the foreigners, whereas the locals <laughs> are hiding inside because they want to have air conditioning. So that's, that's right, something that's right. for thought for other people. That's but right. It's very interesting. Oh. I will share with you about like this article. Oh, the airport. Oh, yeah. The airport. I but have we have to the airport myself because there's new things since I last went back. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This is the airport. How amazing this is. So Singapore Airport has officially been voted as the best airport. Look at that, everyone. Think about I'm from Philadelphia right now in Philadelphia. Think about the airport we have in Philadelphia. Cannot even compare. So like what an experience. Just look at the airport like a student. If this student is open enough, you know, an entrepreneur and will go back to their home country to think about, wow, what can we do to our airport? So things like like that really inspire people to think yeah. differently about their home environment to to make little changes you know disruptive innovation to create a new model of airport a new model of living a new model of whatever that we do so yeah there is a lot of things about singapore that i believe like students who go on this program they will see because singapore is a really small country in terms of land area and there's like uh, about 5.5 million people living there so as you can imagine, the space is really limited. So everyone's living in high rise buildings. So for those of you who haven't seen high rise buildings, you might be like, wow, why are they so tall buildings? But for me, it's very normal. It's like mm -hmm. seeing houses that's not too normal for me because in Singapore, everyone's mostly living in high rise buildings. And not just that, you actually see how Singapore has managed to be creative with the technology and a lot of um, innovation that they have created because they have changed a lot of buildings, they have upgraded buildings and technology. So you can see that a lot of their infrastructure is actually quite modern. So if people who are interested want to see like a modern facilities, sort of like maybe slightly behind Japan, I believe, in terms of that, it will definitely be an eye opener for you. Totally. I'm, you know, this is something I designed this. I worked in higher education for 10 plus years. This is something that I wish my children had access to when they were a student and something that I wish I had access to when I was younger, when I just started out on this entrepreneurial journey. And so kind of to wrap up our quick interview today, I want to like uh, ask you to share a little bit of your educational experience, Clarice. You know, my, my, my company's name, my hashtag is classroom without wars. I'm a victim of the traditional educational system. I truly believe the best education happens outside the classroom. So I want to ask you, you are a very successful entrepreneur yourself and uh, you, you quit your job. You are right now, you know, uh, running your own business and you just spoke at Inbound, which is one of the biggest conference in social media and digital marketing. I want to ask you if you can reflect on your personal experience and educational experience to what extent and in what aspect has the knowledge that you learn from school traditional school environment helped you get to where you are today so that that will be our uh, wrapping up question so share with us <laughs> does it need to be all positive <laughs> sorry <laughs> see the thing is i think i've got a lot of those mindset in school back days because also partly because I'm in Singapore. So the things I learned was you have to answer questions that you're being asked to and to follow instructions. So I'm quite good at that. <laughs> exactly. That's true. But, and yeah. that's why I'm trying to do the opposite of what's like the norm anymore. So I tend to ask more questions. I think, okay, to put it on a positive spin. So one of the things, because um, I studied IT back in university, and I heard a lot of people were telling me, you always have to be keeping up with the times, like you have to keep up the latest news, latest changes, mm -hmm. so you can for up, you can, you know, keep your skills relevant. So I think in that sense, it sort of helped me when I graduated from university to actually, you know, looking at news, looking at what's happening, what's happening online. That sort of like kept me on my toes. So I'm not the kind of person who say, yeah, that's it. What I've learned today is going to be enough for the next 30 years. No, I don't believe in that. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. technology. Lifelong learning. Yeah. yeah. It's going to change the way we're going to do things. It's going to become faster. It's going to become better. So if you are not learning all the time, it means that you are actually going backwards. Um, yeah, I, I so agree. Lifelong learning, learning beyond the classroom, learning beyond the classroom. So this is really, 
exciting. I'm personally excited. I can't wait to see you in person again with our young adults to join this program and the fellow speakers. Again, the program is applicant only. So check out the website, classroomwithoutwars.ai, my name. And uh, the Singapore component is going to be from December 9th to the 19th. Besides uh, Clarice, we have nine other amazing speakers. We also have digital mentors, and you guys will also be visiting Microsoft, Adobe, HubSpot, and leading startup companies. So share with us, Clarice, where can people learn more about you and uh, your website, your social media, where, uh, which social media platform are you most active on? So share with us so people can follow you. Yeah, so um, I have my website at clarislin.com. I have a, quite a number of blog posts about uh, measuring success and using Google Analytics as well for those who want to learn more about it. And I'm most active on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, I guess. Uh, Facebook less so, but yeah, that's sort of about it. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I just uh, entered uh, Clarice's uh, website in the comment section. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that you follow this amazing lady and even better connect with Clarice in person and join us in Singapore. If you know students, young professionals, young adults who are stuck in their life, let's join this movement, the Classroom Without Was, to rekindle their passion for learning, for life, for work, for career, and to be excited about a uh, exciting future. And uh, so thank you, uh, Clarice, again. And tomorrow I'm going to spotlight another speaker and we're going to go back to our normal time at uh, uh, noon uh, Eastern Standard Time, EDT, and 5 p.m. BST. Join us live to check out another speaker. So thank you so much again, uh, Clarice. I can't wait to see you in Singapore. Yes, same here. So look forward to seeing you guys in Singapore. Bye. Bye-bye.